Hey what's up YouTube, a couple of days ago I was browsing through old tech papers and found this Tritech 1 paper and I stumbled upon this bit, screen space grid. I had never thought of that technique before and so I obviously wanted to give it a quick try and then thought hey why not make a short YouTube video as well. So first things first, what is this screen space grid method meant to do? Well, it's on paper a really efficient way to create geometry to displace, meaning the grid has a uniform vertex density in screen space, right? But once projected in wall space, it results in more geometry near the camera than at a distance, so it's like it has a sort of LOD system built in, right? And that's neat. So you could say displace waves with a decently subdivided plane and have great details up close and not worry about the vertex count too much or LOD or things like that. Don't get too excited though, as stated in the paper, the team working on Crytek didn't end up picking this particular solution due to a critical issue, and that issue is indeed quite a bummer, but more on that in a second. Still, I thought it was an interesting idea, so let's give it a try, shall we? The first thing to do is to create a plane in your favorite 3D software, subdivide it to your likings, and export it to UE. Then in UE, drop that imported plane in your scene and create a material. First order of business is to convert that mesh from world to screen space, if that makes sense. So assuming that plane is unwrapped like so, I'm first going to subtract 0.5 to the texture coordinates to have 0, 0, B on the center. Then mask both the red and green channels, multiply the red channel by a negative X unit vector, transform from view to world space. And for the green channel, do the same with a positive Y unit vector also transform from view to world space. I'm also going to multiply that transform x unit vector with a screen resolution ratio. Then add those two vectors together and multiply by 12 seems to be just the right value for me. Not sure why 12 specifically to be honest, so feel free to tweak this value if needed I guess. Then add the camera's position. Cool, I've reconstructed a world position so that subdivided plane faces the camera, simply using its UVs, transform from view to world space, and it's also located at the camera's position. However, that is a world position, and I want an offset, so subtract the vertices initial world position to that reconstructed world position to convert it to an offset. By the way, feel free to watch my style as grass video, where I explain in depth that kind of tricks. Anyway, then apply that material, and oh, where did that plane go? Well, it's here, it's actually precisely at the camera's position, the thing is, the camera has what we call a near clip plane, so anything too close to the camera doesn't render. So this mesh, this plane, has to be pushed forward in camera space, just enough to be past the camera's near clip plane. And by default in UE, the near clip plane is 10 cm away, so let's add an offset forward in view space, by actually not 10 cm, but just slightly above 10, ok? Sweet, however that mesh may still disappear if its original mesh bounds isn't in view anymore, because that screen projection happens on the GPU and the CPU isn't aware of it, and may think the mesh isn't in view anymore. So I can trick the CPU into thinking it's always in view by increasing this mesh bounds by a crazy amount like so. Cool, that plane is now protected in screen space, and if I were to add any object in the world, well, I wouldn't see it, right? Because that plane is indeed right in front of the camera. And now's the time to project that screen space mesh onto an infinite plane in world space. Hmm, a quick google search gives a couple of interesting results, but most of these carry mass equations and transformation matrices, and I was kinda lazy and then thought to myself, hey, Yui has this virtual plane coordinates material function. And what this material function does is to shoot a ray from the camera and compute the position at which that ray intersects with a virtual plane facing a given z vector and placed at a given world position, and that's exactly what I need to do here. For each vertex of this screen space grid, I need to shoot a ray forward in camera space and figure out where that ray intersects with the virtual plane I'm trying to create, if it does at all, right? So really, I'm just interested in that output pin. The thing is, I need to tweak this a tiny bit, so I'm going to copy that entire function, clean it up, and delete any unnecessary stuff. Then that direction vector isn't going to be based on the vertices original world position anymore, but on the screen space position I just built. That being done, there's one critical issue to solve. 
If I were to look at the sky, those vertices here wouldn't intersect with the virtual plane anymore, right? And so that math equation wouldn't have any solution, and that would lead to all kind of glitches. One easy workaround is to add an if statement and check if this dot product is above or below zero. If it's below, that tray hits that virtual plane, and it's okay to forward that world position. Else, I can just build a 2D direction from that vector, multiplied by a crazy amount, to essentially push vertices that do not hit the virtual plane towards the horizon. Sweet, now convert that projected wall position to an offset, and voila! To sum up, that simple plane mesh is first projected from its initial position in wall space to screen space and back to wall space using ray tracing to create an infinite plane. And this wall position can then be used to, say, project a texture in wall space, noise. Now remember I said this method suffers from one critical weakness. Say I display some waves in Z using some noise texture in world space or whatever method I choose, not important. Moving the camera around makes vertices move with it, right? And so those vertices kinda scroll on that noise texture and jiggle all over the place. I wasted an afternoon trying to see if this could be fixed using some kind of world grid position constraint, but meh, either it's not fixable or not smart enough, so I decided to move on. Still, who knows, might be a useful trick to know, and it never hurts to practice some vector math in shaders. That's it for today's video, short and sweet. I'll see you in the next one, take care of yourself, bye!